you're also very soft, you may end up, you may end up suffering, all right, for who you are. For example, if you're the kind of person who is very, um, very accommodative, there are certain environments, there are certain teams that you cannot just take in and accommodate. So it's very important to know that in as much as all of us, and I want to underline, all of us suffer from a type of disorder, which I'll be talking about later. We have so many disorders, okay? We, there's always sort of like an advantage to it. So the first thing, as I said, is that it is said that in our blood, we, sometimes we are, we are born in those families. The second thing is your environment. And I say this, and I will emphasize, and I will highlight in bold and capital letters, how you bring up your teenager affects who they become as an adult. Now, when I was talking about, and, and uh, let, me, let me just re refer to it because I'm finding it, the word very uh, mouthy, um, uh, NPD. NPD in men is a result of, some of them are a result of their own upbringing. Now, we might be, you know, we might get people who are insensitive in terms of, you know, house managers and all that, and they become very strict and they're always beating us and pushing us. Now, the mind picks, and of course we know as human beings, we learn, we learn from people. So we pick that which they're doing to us and we own it. The same thing as a parent, when a teenager approaches you with their problems and you take that and probably not handle it well, which I will be talking about later, then we can say that in the future, if this son of yours or daughter suffers from NPD, we can clearly say that they are a result of poor parenting skills or techniques, all right? That is the second thing. And the third one, the third one which I will, I will, I will you know, uh, highlight is the personality. Now we have four um, basic and major um, um, personalities. We have the cholerics, we have the sanguines, we have the melancholics, and we have the sanguines. Now, ideally, we are told that cholerics tend to be you know, to be suffering from NPD. Why? They're very quick to anger. They're very quick to, you know, um, uh, to action. You know, they can be very insensitive, especially when they're, they're focusing on projects. And all these things I highlighted when I was doing the talk on both the men and the women. And if you really missed on this, I think we have a recording on our YouTube channel. Um, um, George is going to post, you know, our, our social media handles. If you can, you can just search. I, I, don't, um, I don't have so many followers, but I'm here to basically just educate you, anyone who is interested, because mental health is something that is voluntary. You can never force anyone into a therapy room, not even your teenager, because they'll come in, they will sit and they will not share any information. And for us who are counselors, what we do is we, we, we make the environment conducive. So that if your child is brought in because they have discovered by cutting themselves you know, cutting themselves with a razor blade, you know, they're able to handle pain. Then we want to know where is this coming from? What is the trigger and all that? So we make the environment conducive for them to be able to disclose, even as we as counselors disclose to them. Sometimes I feel as parents, and maybe someone can even comment, I'll give us a one or two minutes. Sometimes I feel we normally are quick to judge our teenagers. Um, we judge them instead of trying to understand them. Now, I'm a mother of a 23-year-old man. I will call him man. Um, Alice NPD is narcissistic personality disorder. That's what we are talking about. Uh, so I said that word, narcissism, you know, is so mouthy. So I just said I'll, I'll zero it into NPD. So what I was saying is that, you know, I'm a mother of a 23-year-old man, and I'm currently bringing up a 16-year-old daughter. So I've kind of like had a feel through raising a son through teenage and raising a daughter you know as now we are in the process you know having in form three so what i want to ask and maybe one or one or two people can just comment do you think that when you're saying that your teenager 
is manipulative, that you have the correct judgment and why. Okay, so I'll just give, you know, one, anyone who wants to share, if you're a mother to a teenager, maybe you can just share your comment or a teacher, I can see Martin Bingwa is here, you can just share what is the feeling right now, you know, from parents where you are, what do you think, you know, goes on in us as parents, do we judge them, or is it just that they are who they are? Anyone, please take over. Yes, Alice, Karibu Sana. Why I think so is once he said uh, once we were in church and we were told to to ask for what we wish to have, uh, he said he wishes to have empathy. It really shocked him. Did you hear me? Yeah. Yes, I can hear you, and I'm nodding. A so for him, his desire was empathy. A shocking request. How did it make you feel? Mm, I was shocked, and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it, it kind of proved it kind of uh, confirmed what I was always thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, when somebody trips mm -hmm. and they fall, instead mm -hmm. of going oh no over oh, here, he he gets he bursts out laughing, and I'm like really, mm -hmm. why, why would you laugh on somebody who was falling? Mm -hmm. And this is funny, and I'm thinking it's not funny. Somebody has fallen. Why would you laugh? Mm -hmm. And it really used to piss me. And then the day he said that he wishes to have empathy, mm -hmm. that, killed me. that killed me. Thank you so much, Alice, for sharing. Now, if you've been listening and following through in our talks, I and always say that, that yes. Um, if you if you we can always join the women's group, we always discuss such things. And um, Alice, what I say, and to anyone who's listening to me right now, you can never give anything that you don't have. If you squeeze a lemon, you will get lemon juice, not mango juice. So if your child, if your teenager does not have empathy, if they feel they are not getting empathy, they will never be able, if you squeeze them, they will not be able to give empathy. That is the formula. I always say spiritual laws, uh, they go unopposed and so are psychological or scientific laws. All right. So as, as, as in as much as it came to you as shock, I have also experienced it in a place where you've maybe pushed your teenager so much. You don't show when they come in with problems. You're that strict person. You know, you're trying to, you know, kind of like align them. You're very focused on other things and you don't stop drop to see what is going on emotional, emotionally in them because teenagers are all about emotions. Right. So when you don't really give them or show them that concern they end up now becoming, having these traits that we tend to see later as narcissism, all right? So I personally feel and know that most of us as parents, we mistake the teenagers. We kind of like judge them too quickly. But what exactly goes on in a teenager's mind? Three things happen during teenagers and if you have a pen and paper you can note this down if anyone is uh, is feeling up to this you can also scribe for us on the chat the first thing is identification now teenager teenage 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 stage is about getting an identity this child or this person is in between two very critical stages going towards adulthood, coming from a place of being a child, a place of being dependent on the parents and now being looked at as someone who is mature, all right? Now, when we talk about maturity, let me say this. Another mistaken identity that we have with our teenagers is like, we want them to think like adults. They are not adults. They are coming from childhood, going towards adulthood. Now, when it comes to the civil or a civil law, Anyone who is 18 is considered an adult, and that is just civil law. But when it comes to psychological law, women are, um, are said to mature between 22 to 24. That is when a very small gland in the brain that deals with our maturity gets now to its full potentiality, okay? Now, 
for the men, it is said they mature between 24 to 27, depending on that person. So when you have a 17 year old or an 18 year old and you're busy pointing fingers and saying, you are a mature, you're talking like a child, you know, all these things, and especially our language as parents can be very hurtful. If you have not, if you have no facts, kindly abstain from being too quick to say some things that may be detrimental to your psycho, to your child's mental health. Okay, so during that stage where they are getting an identity, they, they form a defense mechanism where they kind of learn to relate with, uh, with, with beliefs, with uh, certain attitudes, with certain morals and all that. That is why you find that you will hear your teenager talking about cliques. Me, I belong, Anani is not my friend. We don't share the same, you know, we, we don't share the same uh, values, okay? So me, I'm not, you know, and they will quickly be able to rule out who is for them and who is not for, the, for them. They kind of like are able to narrow down to people who they seem to share common values. So when you see your child or your teenager hanging around with drug addicts, don't just say Amanda Pokupeana gospel. He's not going to preach the word of God. That is someone who knows what they are doing. They can be able to identify with the peer, okay, with the peer, the peer members of that group. So it should worry you, why is this daughter or son of mine moving with children or teenagers who tend to have certain morals? Anything you ignore, let me tell you, as a parent, as you bring up your child, will one day come to bite you. And it can bite you hard. Because I always ask, what is the use of going out there to hustle? You put your child in a good school. You are always out there, never maybe having enough time to be with your teenager because you're trying to get them also a good, to give them a good lifestyle. And then eventually, because of your ignorance, you lose this child to drugs. You lose this child to some cults. You lose this child to something that you yourself could have helped him, you know, overcome. All right. So during that identification stage, uh, that is the first thing that happens to a teenager. They want to do, they just have this place where they want to go and just anchor themselves. It should be your business to know, okay, if uh, Oscar is your friend or if it's, it's, it's Ruth is your friend or Martha is your friend. Okay, tell me more. It is your business to know even the parents, where this other child, this friend of your daughter or son comes from because there and then you will be able to know the kind of value system them, that that family where the, your friends, your child's friends belong to. Very, very important. Number two, what teenagers go through is crisis. Crisis, there's a lot of confusion, a lot of confusion, a lot of experimentation, and also a lot of emotions. Do you ever see, you know, yourself giving your son or daughter, your teenager, eh, some small chores to do? Mom, go and get for me this. Oh, no, no, I'm too sure. You know, they are, that child becomes so moody. So, you know, it's like you've insulted them. You know, they're just, you know, they and maybe they will not even eat that day. They will not talk. And yet we just ask for a very small favor. Why is there confusion? You know, why are all these emotions? Because they're also now learning to process what is happening in them in terms of dealing with hormones that are now becoming elevated. The hormones that have to do with masculinity, the hormones that have to do with femininity. We know as adults that sometimes, and especially women, during certain times, we tend to feel in a certain way, and so are men. So when your child is in that space where there's a, con a lot of confusion, a lot of emotions being manifested, please don't be, you know, quick to say, uh, this, this child of mine, you know, excuse me, I'm very rude. You know, I don't know, you're keeping company. No, kindly be, have empathy first on your child. Try and understand that they are growing. They are actually almost at the T, they are at the T junction. And from there, the, the, the road is one, going towards. Now, when you come in and try to interfere, you know, with the processes of this child growing into adulthood, what you're going to do is you're going to retard that child. Have you ever seen spouses who behave like children? 
Hmm? Something happens and they totally regress towards childhood behavior. These are people who were too overparented, overcared for. So they never developed the mental muscle. They never developed the capacity to handle issues as children. And that is why in today's society, a lot of marriages are breaking because people cannot stand the pressure. They were taught that everything they want must come to them. And if they don't get anything they want, if frustration knocks at their door, they cannot relate. So the quickest thing to do is to file for a divorce. Are we the ones to blame? The question still remains, okay? And the third thing that happens to a teenager is diffusion. Diffusion is where they feel they want to accomplish. They want to be, you know, within the social expectations. For example, in the day, in this day and age of today, Instagram is the, the in thing. Yesterday I was at the hub and I was just seeing teenagers who came kubangaza, you know, just waste time, you know, and what are they doing? taking photos to do what? To update their status, to do what? To do their update their profiles. So the kind of pressure that is going on in today's world is not the pressure we handled us as parents, okay? So we need to know that even at this stage where these children are transitioning from childhood into adulthood, they also want to make themselves feel because of something called self-esteem eh? they also want to feel like you know they are part of the society's expectation so say today if the fashion is tumbo cuts like now we are you know we are in this uh, you know fashion that is you know i think i've seen a lot of girls wearing tank tops when your daughter does not you know make it to buy that outfit they will not be happy okay depending before I, I, I we continue to the next chapter, I wanted to talk about that diffusion. You know, society, society has so much expectations. So you find that your child will be busy Googling on uh, Instagram, you know, getting to know on Facebook, what is new? What is the trend right now? Why? They're in just that stage where they also feel like they are part of the trend. They are part of the norm. If the style, the in thing is, you know, uh, dyeing the hair blue, okay? If the, that is the in thing, for sure, for sure, that is what they are going to do, all right? So it is so important that we first learn to understand. And I want to put that in capital letters. We must first understand Okay, our teenagers first before labeling them as narcissistic teenagers. All right, that is very, very important. Now, what are the traits that we see? Now, when I'm doing teenage counseling, because that is another area of speciality. The first thing that I do, as I say, we don't make it a therapeutic kind of thing. I do, I do life coaching for teenagers, and I also do one-on-one, -on -one, just counseling sessions where there are challenges. So when they come in, um, if you're doing a face-to-face, -face, we will meet somewhere in a mall, and we will have a burger. We will have something. We will just do have an activity to break the ice, okay? okay? So that they feel that they are, you know, they are, um, you know, they're, they're comfortable to disclose, all right? Now, teenagers have these traits. Number one, they're very emotional, very reactive, yeah? And sometimes they even do the silent treatment, all right? And most of them pre prefer to be silent and to lock themselves in the room. Number two, they can be very formal and aloof, especially where they have no trust issues or where they are not happy. Number three, they can be very competitive, especially where there's uh, there are other siblings. You find them saying, oh, mom, I feel you love so-and-so more than me, you know? And this, I want to just put a star on this or an asterisk on this because this can be an assistic tendency, all right? Where there's a lot of competition, you know, the, this child is always trying to say that you are not treating them as good as another sibling, all right? Number four, 
we know that these kids are in school. There's a lot of peer pressure. It is difficult for them to, to, you know, to keep friendships. So they keep on jumping from one friendship circle to another. And especially where bullying is involved, you will find that they may kind of like either be reactive or keep quiet. So if you want to really know your teenager very well, always look at their behavior. Don't even go for the words what they're telling you. Just see how they have changed. Because sometimes we say that lies Lies is a tool that narcissistic people, people who suffer from NPD use a lot as a tool of manipulation. So when you see your teenager coming and telling you stuff, also try and do your own research. Now, where there's bullying, you will find that there's a bit of instability when it comes to their thinking processes, when it comes to their stability also in friendship. <music>